Well, what I'm going to try and do in the masterclass is give an overview um, of how royalties work within the music industry. So that will entail having a look at the music industry, um, how the rights arise, and dealing with the particular problem uh, that's now arisen with uh, the older bands, the 80s bands, the 70s bands, uh, whose music is now being um, exploited digitally. My name is Robert Deacon. Uh, I'm a barrister and I practice at 11 Stone Buildings, Lincoln's Inn. Um, I'm a Chancery commercial practitioner uh, and I specialise in media uh, and intellectual property. And uh, over the years I've acted for a number of bands uh, and I'm about to commence proceedings uh, in respect of a digital royalty case for an 80s band. The problem has arisen because a number of artists, bands, etc., have contracts that predate uh, the digital age. So their contracts uh, and the royalty provisions in those contracts deal um, essentially with physical products, namely CDs, cassettes as well, but these days CDs. And uh, the issue that's arisen is that, of course, a lot of music now is consumed digitally. Uh, and one has to look at these contracts to see whether or not they actually extend to digital exploitation. So three real issues arise here. It may be that the contract doesn't actually cover digital exploitation. Now, if that's the case, um, what the, re the recording companies are doing amounts to an infringement of copyright, and the band may even have a claim uh, for damages um, or an account of profits. But the more likely position is that the recording contract does allow uh, the uh, exploitation of the music digitally, but what it doesn't provide for is how that's to properly be remunerated. And the reason for that is that the royalty clauses um, essentially deal with, as I say, physical products such as CDs, and digital downloads are not physical product. So the artists feel that they're losing out. What the artists say is that applying physical product rates uh, to their royalties um, means they don't get their fair share of the income that's actually being received for the exploitation of their music. The recording companies are saying that they need to have um, the old uh, physical product royalties apply because otherwise their share won't be enough and they won't get sufficient income to be able to promote new artists, new groups, that sort of thing. So there is a big issue here, but essentially the real issue is the construction of the contract and how the court is likely to construe it. So I'm going to look at how the music industry works. I'm going to have a look at music publishers. Um, I'm going to look at uh, performers. I'm going to look at uh, the record companies. I'm also going to look at the rights that the um, artists, the performers and the record companies have. That is um, musical copyright, lip literary copyright, the performers' rights and sound recording copyright. I'll move on to look at the basis on which royalties have traditionally been paid uh, for physical products such as CDs. And then I'm going to move on to look at the basis on which royalties should be paid for digital uh, exploitation, particularly downloads, but of course there's other forms as well. And I'll also look at the M&M case, which is a, a landmark decision. Well, the music industry has changed dramatically. Um, now, um, it's not necessary to have physical carriers to enjoy music. Um, music can be downloaded, it can be put on your phone, uh, it can be put on MP3 players, it can be streamed, uh, and there's been a fair explosion of that sort of um, exploitation. So it's been fundamental to the music industry that music is now enjoyed uh, in this different way. As I've said, the main issue is that artists are getting paid um, royalty rates which are appropriate for CDs and not appropriate for the uh, new digital age. Um, and their royalty rates, for reasons I'll explain later, uh, are depressed 
I mean, if the industry were to look at it afresh, the royalty rates would probably be substantially higher for uh, digital exploitation. But what's happened, because historically uh, the royalty rates are based on physical products, which have all these associated costs, like distribution costs and packaging costs, etc., the royalty model uh, is still uh, in the pre-digital age, but particularly for bands whose contracts are in the pre-digital age.